can go first in the food line so they can get what they want. And Lord, I pray that you will just allow this day to be just such a special day for them that they will see that you have got them, that you have already prepared the path in front of them, just as you have for every single person who is in the kingdom of God. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, guess what? Today's graduation day, huh? Our honoring for our graduates. And, you know, all of us, even in the spirit realm, need to graduate. Did y'all hear that? Amen. We all need to graduate. And I'm telling you, when that uh, crown gets put on our head and we take them and throw them at his feet, that's going to be graduation day now, isn't it? Amen. Now, y'all didn't fall asleep already, did you? Let's not fall asleep. Let's set that away from here. All right. Let's turn to Hebrews 5.12. This, um, this message has been very much so a part of my heart for a while. But it just all kind of blew up this week. Um, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And he said, and this was back last Sunday, if I didn't make it, don't eat it. Just think about that for a second. How many of you had Oreos this week? I, I, come on now, raise your hands. Who had Doritos this week? Who had hot dogs this week? If you were there yesterday, you had hot dogs. Maybe. Who had bread this week? Who had crackers? Who had sliced American cheese? None of that. I couldn't have any of it. I couldn't even put sugar in my coffee. And I went to Starbucks this morning. But God made coffee beans, hallelujah. <laughs> and I'm not a really big coffee drinker, but just every so often. And we had a little meeting this morning with someone. So, But when God speaks, are we willing to obey? And it's not about him telling us what to do and us like cutting this off and gluing that on and being so religious about every little thing he you know but it's about hearing his voice and letting him lead us can i have a hallelujah, Amen. hallelujah. listen floyd would you mind standing up here for a second and i do not always obey my husband that is a downfall please forgive me raise your hands in here if you obey your husband or your wife in every single thing all right, I'm not alone. That doesn't mean we're right, does it? No, okay, he's not going to say. So say Floyd decides he's going to lead me, and I have to follow him, all right? Go somewhere, anywhere. Don't make it drug out because we have about 30 minutes here, sorry. Now, wherever he goes, I have to follow him. Whatever he tells me to do, I have to do it. Oh, Jesus, you're going to make me get on the floor. <laughs> okay, people. Don't make me run too much. I don't want to trip over here. So there is a point to this. All right, you can have a seat. Is that how we follow Christ? Is that how we follow Christ? For my sheep know my voice, and a voice of another they will not follow. The voice of another they will not follow. Now, does that mean I'm super, super religious and all I'm going to do is just, okay, God, if you don't say it, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to go to the bathroom unless you tell me. I'm not going to go to work unless you say. No, it's not that. It's being more aware of his spirit and where he's going than you or you or my eyes on your flesh or your flesh or your flesh. What fills our mouth every day? What are we talking about? What consumes our thoughts? What consumes 
our lives? And is it more important than really hearing what the Father is saying to his church? Before things happen in our world, in our church, in our nation, God speaks to who? The prophets. He lays it on their hearts and he says, this is what's going to happen, or he allows them to sense those things that are getting ready to take place. And all throughout scripture, they have warnings, they have correction, they have encouragements, exhortations, And I'm standing in front of you today to tell you that there is something going on in the spirit realm. I have had at least five prophetically gifted people come to me in the past two days who has said it is brewing, it is something that's coming, it is not for everyone to be afraid, but it's time to press in and hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. There is no more time for looking at each other's flesh because if revival is coming, we have to be focused on God and what He's doing. Amen? Amen. So I am standing up here not just sharing what I feel like God has dropped in my spirit, but I'm sharing some of the things that I've even heard from these individuals this week. Hebrews 5, 12. For even though by this time you ought to be teaching others, you actually need someone to teach you over again the very first principles of God's Word. You have come to need milk, not solid food. This was a strong word. Coming to the Hebrews... Oh my goodness. Now I am not here to say, oh, you guys are just sucking on bottles. Come on, you need to grow up. That is not what I'm saying. When you read this scripture, it is time to reflect on your own individual walk with Christ. Have we grown past or grown up or graduated per se or in the process of graduating and learning about God? about who he is and his character. And it's so important that we don't just say, oh, I got saved, hallelujah, I'm going to heaven, because that's the work he did for us. But we let him do the work in us so that he can do the work through us. And we've all heard that. The the, The name of this teaching is called From a Whisper to a Scream. From a Whisper to a scream. And it's talking about creating an atmosphere that God's presence can prevail. Creating an atmosphere that something can happen. The word atmosphere means the pervading tone or mood of a place or a situation. The word pervading means it spreads through and permeates every part. So in an atmosphere of Michelle's homemade buttermilk biscuits, you're going to smell those homemade buttermilk biscuits permeating the atmosphere. And when you come in and you go, the first words out of your mouth is, Where's the butter and jelly? Where are those biscuits? I want some. They're only good because grandmama taught me. What about flowers? I went to go get um, a corset or like a wristlet for Dennis's date for the prom. And I walked in the wrong door at the flower shop. And when I did, I literally walked into the room that they had all the flowers and they were making things. And it about took my breath away. I was like, it is so awesome. And I even said it. There were like 10 people in there. And I'm like, I love this place. Can I stay here? It's so amazing. It smells like heaven. Oh. So it was just, they all looked at me. And I said, do you not realize how amazing it is to work in such an atmosphere, an environment where you smell this aroma all day? And I'm sure some of them are like, (coughs) we work in it every day, you know. But it was amazing, 
Amazing. How many of you have been at Miss Susan's house and you've smelt her air fresheners going off? Psh. How many of you have had to dodge them at times? Psh. <laughs> Smells good. Now, personally, I won't cook collard greens in my house. I like Margaret Holmes because it permeates the atmosphere. And the whole house smells like that for a long time. What about things like you go to get fuel in your gas tank and you accidentally spill some on your shoe or you get it on your pants and you get in the car and it's like, ugh. It changes the atmosphere. Not to get graphic, but what if you're in a bus full of a bunch of kids on the way to Carowinds, happened to me not that long ago, and someone passes gas? <laughs> it changed the atmosphere. I'm telling you, there are not just smells that change atmospheres. Let's talk about our atmosphere at home. We've heard this saying, if mama ain't happy, Nobody Ain't nobody happy. The atmosphere in the home can be kind of rough if that happens. What about daddy coming home from work? If he's not happy, man, nobody's going to be happy. What about at work? If the boss ain't happy, nobody's happy. There are ways that we can change our atmosphere, and this has to do with revival. There are things that we can do, even in our own church, to change the atmosphere. Because God inhabits when we worship. People sense the Holy Spirit coming in. His presence is manifested. He can come in. What about your own body, your own temple? When the temple of God is engaged and we are as priests and kings and we are praising him and we are focused on him leading us and we're not focused on everybody else's flesh and what they did or didn't do that we think they should do or didn't do, then God's presence can come in. Then we can, oh, I can hear his voice now because there's no clutter. The atmosphere is different. Now, I have a friend of mine. He had a habit of doing this. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he would walk through his house. Could you tell the difference in the atmosphere? Yeah. It's not just the sound, but it's where my heart is when I'm doing it. I'm breaking down walls. I have walked through my, my, the office at work. Man, it can be stressful, the boss, and everyone's like, and then everybody leaves. And I'm like, I'm the one left with 25 people's stuff in the atmosphere. And I get up, and inside of me, I pray, I walk through that place, I've anointed that place, and I start clapping my hands, and I'm praising God, and I'm dispelling everything that could take over in that place. When is the last time we've done that in our own homes to change the atmosphere? Yeah. What about this home? Are we just praising God like this during worship? Or are we engaging every part of us to worship Him? I'm longing for the New Jerusalem folks. And it's not too far away. Remember Joshua. Remember what God told Joshua about marching around Jericho. March, but don't talk. There's a reason he told them not to talk, folks. Do you know how nervous the people of that town were? They were shut in because of fear. They were shut up in that place because of fear. And they marched the first day. One time, March. March the second day, quiet. They had the trumpeteers and everybody out there. They had everybody out there. But they did not talk. How many of us in here could put a piece of tape on our mouth for an entire day? 
Some of us are quiet by nature. Some of us like to talk more than others. But I have a question for us all. How many want revival? Again, how many want revival? Is revival people laying out all over the floor, being slain in the spirit? Is it people leaping and praising God because they're healed? Is it, wow, just the drunken laughter that goes on and everyone's like, oh, dude, wow, we got revivals going on. That's not revival. You getting ready for thunder again? <laughs> All right. It's not, that's not revival. True revival, in the definition of it, is an improvement in the condition or the strength of something. When something becomes active, 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 and that is what revival is. So seeing these things happening are great, but was there improvement? Was there a change? Did God just touch that person and they walked out and did the same thing they did yesterday? Or was there a change? Paul getting knocked off his horse. Yeah, it was a pretty good improvement there, don't you think? Something happened in that man. There was a change, a change. I have a question. Let's talk about the atmosphere of the Shield of Faith Church. Are we unified? Are we in agreement? Are we in disagreement? What disagreements are we in? Are those disagreements really that important? If they are, get it taken care of. Go to the person, communicate with them, and get it over with. Because in order for there to be unity and revival, there has to be agreement. If two do not walk in agreement, they go in opposite directions. Are we able to communicate with everyone in here without feeling anger, without feeling hatred or jealousy or rage? Are we able to talk to one another openly without feeling all these things that the enemy has implanted in our flesh? Because that's all it is, folks, is flesh. How many of you in here have ever sinned? Every hand should be up or else Jesus died on that cross for nothing. And sin is sin. I don't care whose bones it's on. We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And if we haven't, then Scripture's wrong. Because that's what it says. We have all sinned. Is Pastor Bob better than us? Are you better than me? Am I better than you? No. No. The enemy wants to stop the manifestation of God's presence and the way he does it is he causes us to have these disagreements. Remember I said the name of this teaching is from a whisper to a scream? God has been speaking through teachers and prophets for a very long time, pastors, every one of the fivefold ministers. Get ready, get ready. Get ready. Get yourself ready. Let God do the work in you. You've heard it from every single person that stood up here today. It is no longer just a little plea, folks. And let me tell you, it isn't something that's going to be extremely difficult either. And I'm going to show you how awesome and encouraging this is. I'm going to skip over my notes just a little bit. In Revelations 19... 6 through 8, we hear some pretty loud shouting and screaming going on. Let's look at Revelations 19, 6 through 8. Uh, verse 6. After that, I heard what sounded like a shout of a vast throng, like the boom. 
of many pounding waves and like the roar of terrific and mighty perils or peals of thunder exclaiming hallelujah Woo! I don't know about you, but if that made you feel uncomfortable, you might want to just stay right here because it's going to get loud up there. Because I don't know about you, but my lover, the lover of my heart, is preparing. He is preparing a place. He's preparing. He's preparing. Wow. Those days were prepared before you even knew it, before you were even born. Imagine what heaven's going to be like. What? Leaping and jumping and praising God. Like thunder, exclaiming, hallelujah. You guys, I'm telling you, it is awesome. God is awesome. Let's go on to verse 7. Let us rejoice and shout for joy, exulting and triumphant. Let us celebrate and ascribe to him glory and honor, for the marriage of the Lamb at last has come. And his bride has made herself ready? Wait a minute. Let's go to Ephesians 5. We're, we're going we're gonna to jump into this thing, and I'm going to show you something about the bride making herself ready. And before we leave today, we're going to sing the New Jerusalem again, folks. That's a loud hint for our technical people upstairs. Linda, would you mind leading us in that at the end, please? Ephesians 5, let's look in verse 25. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. When's the last time you took your wife out on a date? When's the last time you said... Wife, sit down. Let me handle this. When's the last time you said, Wife, I got this. Let Daddy handle it. Amen? Verse 26. So that he might sanctify her having cleansed her by the washing of the water with the word. Thank you, Frank, for sharing that earlier. There's a so that. You know, we, we talk about therefores in Bible. What about so that? He gave his life so that he might sanctify us and free us from sin, right? Yes. Yes. Let's go to verse 27. Bing. And in mine, it says so that. He might present the church to himself in glorious splendor, without spot or wrinkle. So you're telling me that when Jesus died on the cross, everything was already done, and because he's without spot or blemish, guess what we are? Thank you. Without spot or blemish, the work is already done. The W-O-R-K work is done. It's already finished. So then how are we making ourselves ready if the work is already done? If the work is already done, how are we making ourselves ready? Go back to verse 26 again. Having cleansed her by the washing of water by the word. Water in the Bible is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. The work is done. However, we are to be led by the Holy Spirit. As he leads, we will follow. The voice of another we will not follow. We simply follow, folks. We simply follow. We focus on the Spirit. We focus on where he's leading us. 
we become more in tune with the spirit world and less in tune with someone else's flesh. Someone else's downfalls and what they're not doing because we want them to do it. It's not our job to put someone in their place. It's not our job to come up here and teach just so we can get our point across. It's our job to come up here and be obedient to God when he says speak. Ask, ask these two sitting up here how I've been the past 24 hours. Crying, God, don't make me be the one to give this. But yet graciously he has been strengthening me even as I've been speaking because this is not an easy word to deliver. We haven't even gotten to the good part. And I will say, within five minutes, I will end this message so that we can go back and celebrate our, our graduates. He cleanses us by the washing of the water by the word. But if we're not in the word, our spirit man's not going to be strengthened, and we are not going to be able to be led by him in a positive way. We have to spend time with him. How many of you know I'm a busy person? Most of you know. But I promise you, I am never too busy to get in the presence of the one who made me. And if you ever think for two seconds that I've put too much in my plate and that I need to back up, you come to me and talk to me about it. Michelle, I don't think you're spending enough time in the Word. I don't think you're spending enough time with the Lord. How about whenever King David had all of his guards, they were with him, and he's Traveling through, right? Traveling. Where's my uh, scripture here? Let me get to this one. Where did I put my uh, phone? Ah, there it is. This story is amazing. We don't have to turn there, but in 2 Samuel, you can write this down for later. 2 Samuel 16. King David has got all of his guards and everything. And lo and behold, Shemil. Shemil comes out. This dude thinks he's all something. King David riding on his horse. And he starts throwing rocks at the king when his guards are there. Now, if Pastor Bob was standing up here and a Shamil came up and decided they're going to take these stones and start whizzing them at Pastor Bob, how many of you would stand up? Everybody, probably. You know those guards. <laughs> Pastor Bob takes pictures of everyone. You know those guards were chomping at the bit. Did they go after him and just cut him in half and be done with it? No. They waited. They waited to hear what the king had to say. I've had a lot of these thrown at me. I've had them thrown at me because I hurt your feelings. I've had them thrown at me because I sinned against you and everybody else. But my pastor did not slice you in half, did he? Everyone in here can stand in my shoes and say the same thing. And my point is King David let Shamil go because he knew that it was a word from God. How open are we for someone to come to us in whatever manner that God sends them to say, this right here needs to be taken care of? Because in him doing that, it caused a huge release. David knew he had made mistakes. He asked God to forgive him, but yet this moment in history, his guards probably couldn't understand. Why wouldn't you just slice him and ha you let this happen? But it was God's grace to bring things to his attention. Remember Balaam and his donkey? Lord, every single person that's in this room, if you come to me in love and you talk to me, even with Pastor Bob or my husband, I will hear what you have to say, and I will take it to the throne. Because I want revival in this, this being right here. Do you want revival? Do you want revival? From a whisper to a scream, there are, there are those in, I mean, I've talked to so many people in different churches. There are a lot of whispers 
going on. Let's turn to Proverbs 26. And we're going to look in verse 20. Proverbs 26, verse 20. For the lack of wood, the fire goes out. And where there is no whisperer, contention ceases. If you walk into a situation, and I'm, and I'm encouraging you because people, the shield of faith is a diverse church. We have diverse worship for a reason because we're like a hospital for people. And you can't just use one doctor. That heart doctor's not going to help your feet. We have many different ministers. We all function differently. That's why we're here, to function differently. So these people that Frank are talking about, they're going to be coming in. We need every single one of you here. God wants his kings and priests to be ready. We can't make you ready. The bride makes herself ready. Amen? You're not going to push on me so far that you make me change. But if God gives you a word for me, I, I want to hear it. I want to hear it. Amen? Amen? Let's go to the next verse. Can I have two more minutes? Is that okay, guys? Sure. Okay, I'm sorry. Thank you. As coals are to hot embers, coals to hot embers, so as wood to the fire, so is a quarrelsome man to inflame strife. Next verse. The words of a whisperer or a slanderer are like dainty morsels or words of sport to some, but to others like deadly wounds. Have you ever had someone talk about you behind your back and it came back to you? They're like deadly wounds, and then every time you get around that person, you just feel the heebie-jeebies. And they go into the innermost parts of the body or of the victim's nature. I'm telling you folks, we have to be so careful what we say and how, because we can destroy a church, we can destroy a body, a family, a workplace by our whispers. It's so important. Verse 23, and those whispers come from attitudes in the heart, burning lips, uttering insincere words of love. I love you. <laughs> and a wicked heart are like an earthen vessel thrown off from molten silver, making it appear to be solid silver. That's like taking this and saying it's silver and saying it's silver, but it's not full silver. It's clay underneath. Verse 24. He who hates pretends with his lips, but stores up deceit within himself. 25. Verse 25, please. When he speaks kindly, do not trust him. For seven abominations are in his heart. The word of God is true. The word of God is true. Please forgive me if I've ever spoken a word against you. God has already forgiven me. But forgive me if I've spoken anything against you that has gotten in your craw. If I've done things to hurt you, I've done things to hurt people. Have you? Are you willing to admit it? Are we willing to ask each other for forgiveness? Are we willing to forgive and let it go to the point where it's never on our lips again? That we don't burn with anger and hatred. For seven abominations are in his heart. That's seen in Proverbs 6. And we're not going to turn to Proverbs 6, but these are the, the six, seven abominations. A proud look, a lying tongue, Hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that creates wicked plans. Feet that run swiftly to evil. False witness who breathes out lies or even half-truths. And one who speaks discord or rumors among brethren. You know, hash is great. But if you rehash hash, and you rehash, and rehash... 
and rehash and then do the rehash again. <laughs> do you want to eat that? And it's not very good. The word whisper in these scriptures means this. It's from an unused root meaning that means to roll to pieces. To roll to pieces. It's taking a story and rolling it so many times that there's pieces all over the place. And you don't have the whole story. You only have pieces. And that is what destroys and kills. In the book of Psalms, it's amazing, from Psalms 120 through Psalms 134, it's what they call a song of ascents, A-S-C-E-N-T-S. And King David wrote these, and that word ascents, you ready for this? The word ascents means to ascend. Imagine that. Literally a journey to a higher place. All these from Psalms 120 to Psalms 134. Read those this week if you get a chance. They will take you to a higher place in your walk with God. Journey to a higher place. It's a good starting point. I'm encouraging you guys. I'm not just here to say, well, we need to stop whispering. No, we need to be encouraged to move forward. Amen? Yeah. Let's look in Psalms 133. There's only three verses there. It's a song of ascents by David. Psalms 133, verse 1. One thirty three, verse one. I know what the first word is. Behold. Ah! Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in Humanity. Woo! Verse two. It is like the precious ointment poured on the head that ran down on the beard and even to the beard of Aaron, the first high priest. Wait a minute, we're priests, right? Yeah. That came down upon the collar and the skirts of his garments, consecrating the whole body. The oil is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit take you over. Verse 3, it is like the dew of lofty Mount Hermon and the dew that comes from the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing, even life forevermore upon the high and the lowly. He wants to command the blessing. He wants to. But there's unity. God commands the blessing. Unity means we're not focused on each other. We're focused on God. Amen? Amen? How willing are we to do that? Are we going to go from a whisper to a scream? Hallelujah! Are we going to let God do the change in our life down here to get us to where we're over here? And all we want to do is worship the Holy Lord, our God, our Savior, our King. We're going to live forever and ever. Are we willing to change the atmosphere of our homes, our jobs, our church. Are we willing to put things aside Hallelujah! and grow up, Amen. get away from the milk, start absorbing the meat and let it nourish your bodies and move forward in God? There are prophets in this building yeah. just waiting to come out, waiting, chomping at the bit. I have seen their face while I'm up here preaching and I can't wait to hear what God speaks to them. We've got one with the prophetic gifting sitting right there that doesn't come very often, but he's here today because God said he was supposed to be here today. And I bet you he's got a testimony on how he even showed up today. <laughs> be encouraged. The time is short, however, no matter how loomy-goomy this little thing that's getting ready to happen in the spirit that's brewing is, guess who you are? Yeah. You're God's child. You are the child of the most high God, and his focus is on you. He prepared the way. He took away all your sin, took away every shame, every guilt. So let's not hold it against each other. It's God's plan that we work together in unity. And guess what? This building isn't by chance. 
These leaders that we have here are not by chance. He has strategically placed us together for a reason. Because he knew that we could learn from one another. That porcupine is there for you. Hallelujah! Amen. We are growing. Pastor Bob can attest. Pastor Bob, go ahead and come on up if you don't mind, sir. From a whisper to a scream. When God spoke and created the world, that word speak meant in a large latitude. And when something was created, the Holy Spirit told me this, when God created things, he inserted them. He took those things he created and inserted them right where they needed to be. The word insert. He spoke and it happened. And he's speaking today. Are we willing to let him do the work in us to bring us where he's called us to be? And if so, everyone stand your feet real quick. Hold on a second. Let's stand your feet. If you're making that commitment right now to let God do that work and to just ask him to give you an ear to hear, let's pray this prayer together before we turn it over to Pastor Bob. Say, Father, Father in Jesus' name, Jesus' name. I turn over. I turn over. My worldly eyes. My broken eyes. My desire to focus on flesh. And I ask you. I ask you to help me. Help me. Focus on you. Focus on you. And what the Holy Spirit wants me to do. That's what the Holy Spirit wants me to do. I repent. I repent. Of every sin of omission. And every sin of commission. It's been of commission. I repent of every wrong attitude. I repent of every wrong attitude. All negative talk. All negative talk. Every critical remark. Every critical remark. I repent of all murmuring. I repent of all murmuring. And all complaining. And complaining. I ask your forgiveness. I ask for forgiveness. And now I receive your forgiveness. Now I receive your forgiveness. And your cleansing. Your cleansing. For you are faithful. For you are faithful. And just. And just. To forgive me. To forgive me. And to cleanse me. And to cleanse me. From all unrighteousness. From all unrighteousness. Father. Father, I forgive. I forgive every person, every person of everything, of everything they have said or done, or done to me in any me. way. I do forgive them, I and I ask you I ask to forgive you them. To forgive, and I bless them. And I bless them in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for your precious blood. For your precious blood to cleanse me. To cleanse me and make me holy before and make you. Me whole I am now a vessel of honor. I am now a vessel of honor unto you. Unto you. And I present my body. I present my as body a living sacrifice, as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Ho holy and acceptable unto you. Unto you. Which is my reasonable which service. Which is my reasonable service. I am not conformed to this world. I am not conformed to this world. But I'm transformed. But I'm transformed by the renewing. By the renewing of my mind. Of my mind. I ask you to create in me. I ask you to create in me a clean heart, O oh God. A clean heart. And renew a and right renew spirit, a right spirit within, within me, me, toward myself, towards myself, toward you, towards you, toward your work, towards your and work, toward others. Others. Let the words of my mouth, let the words of my mouth, and the meditation, and the meditation of my heart, of my heart, be acceptable, be, be acceptable in your spirit, in your spirit. For you are my strength. And you are my you strength. are my redeemer. You are my redeemer. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated just for a little bit. Now here's the beautiful thing about it. God has heard our prayer, and we have been cleansed from all unrighteousness.